Hi, I'm Tim from the Heresy Group. After last night's live stream, uh, specifically talking about these, is the uh, Baller Tactical 1431s made by the company called Argus. Um, there was lots and lots of questions, lots of controversy, and lots of points that I don't think I was clear enough on. So I wanted to go into a little bit more detail. Now, this video is going to be quite dry, and if you are not uh, accustomed to some of the acronyms around uh, night vision, or there's something you don't understand, Put the comments in the box below and I will try and explain. Now, firstly, I'm no night vision expert by any means. I've spent a lot of time using night vision and I've done a lot of reading around night vision. Um, and I find this subject incredibly interesting and I've done a lot of nerding out on what the different generations mean and so on and so forth. So I'll share some of my knowledge. If you are an expert, which I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people watching this uh, and you want to add your points below, please feel free to do that. I am always going to get stuff uh, wrong at times and I might not be educated enough uh, so I might get stuff some stuff wrong so if I do let me know uh, but I will give you as much of an in-depth overview on these and I'll talk about the makeup and where they got the name and, and in comparison to some other things and some of the key pieces of information about these now I'm not going to go into why I got this particular model because I will cover that in another video uh, but I am just going to talk specifically about an overview of this so again uh, the 1431 where does that name come from well, essentially, this is a 31 styled body. Now, I say styled because the bridge and the top mounting system is very, very similar to the 31, PBS 31 style of how this bridge goes together and how it connects down to the tubes. But these tube bodies themselves, where my fingers are, are different from the 31s. Now, the core thing about the 31s is towards the rear eyepieces, so back at the base here, they're ribbed. They've got like a skeletonized frame, and I'll put a photo in now where you can see the difference between the two. One of the core things that is very similar to the 31 is the front of these. So I'm just going to flip these over like so, and you can see these from the front. This power on knob, that's not a little light or anything in there, uh, but essentially you push this in uh, and it turns them on and you push it in again and it turns them off. And then you've got your AA battery on the bottom. So please don't get this confused. A lot of people think that all night vision runs on CR1s and 3As uh, and these and a few other units will run on AA's. So that's quite handy uh, and they are a lot more cost effective. So um, the whole bridge part is really where the 31 name comes from. These actual tube pods on the end are slightly different, as said. Uh, where does the 14 part come from it? So most of you guys that are into night vision or know about night vision will have heard of the PVS-14. It's a monocular and it's been around for donkey's years. Uh, it's had various iterations of tubes going in and it's had a few different designs. I think there's a A, B and C, um, but uh, evidently it's the same thing. Now, the PVS-14 lenses have slightly evolved. Some of them are like this and they have a much shorter set of dial caps and this is metal and some of these are plastic. But evidently, the front lens design has changed very slightly with the locking caps at the bottom and lots and lots of adjustment for focus. But the rear lenses uh, are probably the ones that you're most accustomed to seeing in video games, movies and whatever. Uh, and these haven't changed very much over the years at all. The nice thing about these is the scale of them. They are very, very big rear eyepieces. So I'm just going to compare it to my thumbnail. Uh, and there you go there. You can see it's a much, much larger diameter. Just for example, uh, the Fleur rear 51 eyepieces are about the same size as my thumbnail and there's other night visions on the market that are about probably this sort of size to look through. So this is, um, you know, probably about the same size as a pound coin. As you can see, uh, the unit on the left is significantly bigger. But that 14 rear eyepiece is really good for a number of reasons and I've laid some of the uh, reasons out below. The accessories for PVS-14 lenses uh, are readily available and they are quite cheap. So let's just compare um, to something like 31s, where lifts are quite rare, uh, unless you roll in very special circles. And if you're in the US, you know, that's the only real commercial place that 31s are available. Uh, and for 15s, again, uh, the same sort of problem. And even for your uh, Fleurs and Cobra Demons and the rest, some of the Cobras will take 14 parts, but Fleurs and so on and so forth uh, will not. So your added accessories, like are in here, you will see these in photos, these uh, cool green lift filters. Uh, these are PVS-14 lift filters, and you just screw them in and out with this little cap that goes on there, and they unscrew out, and you can screw them back in. Very, very simple. But the accessories for the PVS-14 front and rear lenses, again, are quite readily commercially available. And we've got some different types of ones here. So this is a front, uh, you know, protective lens, or, you know, it's uh, just 
uh, a breakable lens, but it will stop your lens from being damaged. Uh, and these are really uh, quite easily available. You can get these on eBay. And if you really want to, take this out uh, and pop that out like so. You get this and you put this in a Butler Creek and it will give you some protection if you want to. Uh, is it as strong as, you know, thick Lexan or polymer or anything like that? No, but if you can pick these up really cheap and you can put them over the top like so. I'll just put the rubber on so you can see what I mean. It pops over the top like that. Uh, so things like that are inherently very easy to get hold of. Then we've got screwing rear demist chill please excuse the fingerprints on these uh and then i've also got amber lenses for the rear which uh when you put them in front of your your night vision you get this lovely amber view um and essentially that just takes some of the strain off the eyes and it can help with the contrast if you look down here you can see the contrast really come in with the colors so they can be incredibly helpful and again these are readily available these are by a company called operate uh, these are low profile amber filters and they also do uh, operate do protective lenses for the front and they are rated up to two joules which is really good uh, one of the things that i do like about the operates although i will probably do a separate video on these is how clear they are uh, i have put my sticky fingers all over that but you can see really really nice quality lenses uh, all of these uh, this is a screw in uh, sack shield for the front um, so a sacrificial lens to stop any damage uh, they are all capable of fitting this device and they're all fairly readily available. Um, and so other device types, you might not have as much luck. So that's where the 1431 name comes from. You know, this part here really is 31 uh, and these are slightly different. Uh, and the front and rear lenses are from PVS 14s. So that's the 1431 body. Uh, now, I guess there's only a few units that we can compare this to. In the European market, we really have two. It's the Fleur BNVD, and I'll put a photo in of that now. And there is also the Actin Black DTV NG um, as well to compare to. Now, these are fairly new on the market, and there is only a few written comparisons out there, um, but two of them are very good. One by the Firearm blog, and there is another written review on Reddit, which is also a very, very good read and very compelling, uh, and really does talk to just how good these units are in comparison to 31s, which is what they were dir like directed against. Uh, I won't really talk too much about 31s because they are not available in the UK, and uh, you will not really see a set of them ever kicking around. So it's hard to compare. Um, now, if you are one of my US followers, uh, then I will quickly throw a thought in now. So you guys are going to be very familiar with 31s as you can get them over there. Um, I think you may need to be LEO or uh, MIL in some states, but I know they're available in others. But um, we won't talk about 31s. We'll talk about a direct comparison to BDNVs uh, and the DTVNGs. So... What's it compare? What, how would you compare these to the flares? Well, the articulation on these is much, much better than the flares. The actual range of movement is much better. So they actually come in closer at the bottom uh, and they have these uh, PDQs, uh, screws at the bottom, which allow you to put them in nice and close together, like so. Uh, and you can really get them in nice and tight. Uh, and then also the articulation all the way back up to the top is also very, very good. So they have a l real big range of movement to tuck these things up and out of the way uh, if you choose to stow them like that or however you choose to wear them. So they do have a better range of motion uh, than the flares and also than the DTVNGs purely because of the design. As you can see, it's got that wing design at the top and that stops them from folding back as far. Uh, why is it important that they fold back, I hear you ask? Well, for two reasons. Uh, one, because you're going to get them up out of the way when you're wearing them. Uh, and for two, the more that the weight is back towards the helmet, the more balanced they are. When they're in this position, you can actually feel the difference on your head. So if I turn this sideways, you can see just how much further from the center of mass of this lid they are sitting forward. Uh, all of you know about levers, so I'm not going to go into that, but essentially this is giving you a lever effect. So the further it sticks out, the more it's going to tilt your lid. The nice thing about these, again, the further that they come back with that articulation, uh, the more it brings the centre of balance uh, of the, uh, the helmet uh, back towards the centre, uh, and then that makes it feel a lot more comfortable on your head. So that articulation can be quite important. Now, these have one feature, uh, and that is that you can turn auto off on or off, which is pretty cool. Uh, what is auto off? Essentially, when the unit is down, I'm just gonna fold this down like so, and in front of your eyes, 
when they're down like that, they're on. And when you flick them up with your mount, so I'm just gonna fold these up like so, they'll turn off. That's just simply uh, it. Now, some units have articulated on and off. And me and Richie discussed this last night. Um, articulated on and off means as you fold them up like that, this unit will power off. Now, this can be good in some cases. The issue that we have with it is when the articulation cutoff point comes in. And for this, I'm gonna to need to spin you guys around and show you what I'm talking about. So to carry on with this point, it's when the articulated point shuts the unit off. You flip your units down like so, and they're over your eyes, right? So I'm just gonna get these set to roughly where they would be. Okay, perfect. So sorry that I can't see you and that you can't see my eyes. When we're talking about the articulated cutoff, for me, I would quite like to move this unit up probably about, I don't know, this much? Maybe not too much more than that, because I still want to be able to flick this down quite quickly, and I've got a really good field of view from this eye straight forward. Like, it's not really being blocked by this night vision at that point. Now, if your articulated cutoff turns off here, that's great. If it doesn't turn off until it's all the way up until its top position, as most articulated cutoffs are, you just have to move your night vision further up more. Now, has it cleared my field of view more? Yes, 100%. But the, the, the likelihood is I would only move it up so much. Uh, and because of that, I would more than likely only move it to here. So potentially it's gonna be on anyway, which is why I think they didn't include it in this, because a lot of people will do this with their nods. Now I can see you guys perfectly, and I really don't have much in my peripherals. Yes, some of my eye level is blocked, but my nods aren't articulated up that much. And because of that, the articulated cutoff for me is a little bit of a counterpoint. Also, you might just want to move your nod a little bit, right? So I can still see through, as you can see, through to my eye, and I've got a pretty good view of what's in front of me. At that point, the tube's still gonna be on. So the articulated cut for me, yeah, is important, but it really comes into when the articulated point comes, you know, cuts the unit off. So, I'll fold these back up, fold these back. This is really comfy, actually. Uh, that's one point that's really, really important. And while I've got you faced around this way, there's a few things that are important to note, especially with this unit. Over the flurs, which do have a thing called PD, I think it's pupillary distancing, something like that. Essentially what it does is if you've got your tubes like this, it allows that adjustment. If you've got a wider head or eyes closer together, it allows you to sort of my, you know, give minor adjustment to that. These have these things called PD screws. They are, when I can find them, they are here. Uh, so these little screws at the top. And essentially what they do is they give you a stop point for when you fold your nods down. And I will show you what that looks like now, right? So fold my nods together and they're too far in. I can see essentially round the outsides of them. So I need to open them out a little bit. So I'm gonna open them out. Okay, perfect. Now, right now, there is nothing stopping me from accidentally knocking one of these and knocking it inwards, and now I can't see. These little screws at the top, when you screw them in, so I'm just gonna screw them all the way in, just for example's sake. Now, when I fold them in, they stop. So they won't go in any further, and you can see they're sticking out quite a bit. There's quite a big gap there. So they will enable you to set like a stop point for when you fold them back in. So I fold it up, and I need to get it back in. The issue you're gonna have with the DTVNGs is you can fold them too far past your stop point and all the way in like that and see around the outside of them. Like there's no set stop point. And that is one thing that I do like about these. And the same with the flares. You can set that, that closure point. So they were two things that I just wanted to cover and now we'll spin back round to the device. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these off of the helmet just so we can talk through the next bit. Now, the way that I run it, I have a hole drilled here and I've got some bungee cord and I just put a couple of knots in here and then heat shrinked it. 
And this is good just for if the unit was to ever fall. This one and the one on the other side, I'm just gonna hold it in place if my mount was to ever fail. I guess that's what these are for. And on here, I run the FMA bump and I've got an FMA uh, CNC LG L4G24. Anyway, so that's the setup on the helmet. As you can see, works pretty well. Let's just get rid of that for the moment. Let's talk about these. So people are gonna say, okay, how do they feel? How rugged do they feel? How, how robust? Now, I saw a set of 31s at the EN tax show, so the Enforce tax show in Germany a few years ago, and I actually spent pretty much a whole afternoon just looking at night vision in various different devices. Now, this nylon polymer stuff goes by a few different names. As you can always see, it's like that mottled sort of look. Uh, it's incredibly robust. And a lot of devices, um, especially meal spec devices, are made from this. Now, there's some other devices that are out there, specifically the flares that aren't. They're just kind of a polymer composite, um, and they don't have that mottled look like this, much like the 31s uh, do. So I'm really confident in the body themselves, and it's all sort of screwed together really, really nicely. So I'll show you through all the seams. Now, please excuse the fact that these have had my grubby hands all over them. As you can see by little bits of dust in here, they have been down to the quarry with me uh, and I have used these out and about a few times now. So I've used them a fair bit. Nice thing about these is just how nice and stiff all of this is uh, and how solid it feels. That's one of the key things that I really liked about the flares. They felt solid and much like the DTVNGs, they feel robust. Now the DTVNGs probably feel really kind of the most blocky because they have these big slopey sides and they're just a bit big in regards of their scale. This is much more skeletonized and I do much prefer this design. So the other nice thing obviously is you've got them PD screws here. Now I added these little rings on the back uh, just because it's easier to clip onto the helmet but you can if you choose to just choose to use these um spinning these round then to this side good point to talk about what's that this is a lemo socket and these are exactly the same as the ones on the pvs 31s uh, and these will go out to an auxiliary battery pack that battery pack will hold four aa batteries and that will give you around 40 hours of lifetime. So you say about 10 hours per battery. Now that's not tested yet. And to be honest, I've never run a battery completely out in nods. I always replace them pretty much every time I go to an event, which will be much cheaper knowing that this is a AA unit. Again, from the front, uh, people say the dial. It's not a dial, it's a push button that turns the unit on and off. There is no IR illuminator on this. Does that phase me? absolutely not i've never ever used an ir illuminator on my device ever i've ever used you know a laser or a peck or a vampire to, uh, a surefire vampire so for me that really makes no odds i do really like the fact that it has this port and as soon as the battery pack comes out from the guys over at argus that will be sold by baller tactical uh, i will be getting one another nice thing straight into a dovetail so this dovetail shoe on the top is made by this company called it's made by Argus, uh, so the guys who make the body, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to try and get it to, to focus. Oh, there you go. Right, perfect. Uh, and they provide to make that shoe, and then that shoe will go in any of your Wilcox mounts. It does feel incredibly sturdy, and that's kind of one of the key things that you want from your nods. Now, if I was to put this in competition, I'd probably say this feels a little bit more rugged than the um, Fleurs, and the lenses are way, way nicer. There's no real comparison on the lenses compared to the flares. Uh, these are super nice. Speaking about the DTVNGs, I actually much prefer the style of these. They look less bulky, they're less blocky. Um, these look much more sleek and much more like 31s, which is, you know, the cool of the cool kids, right? DTVNGs are not that cool looking. Um, whereas 31s are. Now, opinions, okay, everyone has one, that's mine. Um, you don't have to agree with it, but, but I do think these look much cooler. 
The last point to make, uh, and I will do a separate video on this, is if you imagine a Cobra or a Caterham Super 7, right? The, the car that you can buy, the kit car. That chassis is capable of doing incredible things. It can have, you know, incredible performance. And all of it really depends on the internal build. And it's much like all of night vision, and especially these. If you put a set of very cheap, um, you know, poorly made, let's say Russian, for example, although there are other companies that make tubes, but if you put a really poor set of tube in the, tubes in these, it doesn't matter how good the body is, the actual performance of the unit yeah, is gonna be is gonna be subpar. If you go for a Photonis, 4G, an Echo, anything like that, you really are using this to you know a much higher specification. Now, before the Americans jump in, because I know you guys will, uh, and say, Photonis, oh no, they're terrible, you know, Elbit or whoever, right? L3. Um, we don't have that capability here in Europe to be able to get that higher grade of tube. And when we start looking towards the harder tubes from Photonis, uh, they are extremely, extremely expensive. So what I would recommend to people is, you know, get a really good body. You know, these are available, they're commercially available. If you break them, um, they have warranty and those sorts of things. You can get spare parts for them. If your lens does get shot out, if it does get damaged, if you drop them, you can get spares of all this which you're not going to be able to get with your black market night vision. And now, sadly, now that Fleur is no longer commercially trading, you won't be able to get units, uh, re re replacements from them. I'm not sure about acting black. I've never really dealt with them that much, but um, I don't know what their after service is like. They don't really have a shop or anything online. Uh, and I don't even know if they do commercial sales anymore. So who knows? Now, when it comes to one of the key things about this is the weight. They are really nice and light. Now, all jewels are around the same. Let's just say 600 grams. They're about that. Now, dependent on Butler's, Lexan, amber rear lenses, what battery it takes, what doodads and accessories you have to retain them to your helmet, uh, all of that is going to change. But for now, you know, as this stands, uh, when it's got a battery in it, I did take the battery out, but when uh, this is in there, it's uh, 860 grams. So, uh, 580 grams. Jesus Christ, sorry. Um, so, the weight is not anything that is worth crying around. You know, it's not substantially heavy. It is lighter than 15s. Um, in comparison to 31s, the 31s are slightly lighter. Um, but... 31s have no diopter adjustment on the rear. So if you wear any sort of corrective lens on the rear uh, uh, for your eyes, um, the 31s don't have any, any adjustment, whereas these do. So, you know, if you wear glasses, for example, you can actually get these to work with your eyes, um, even though uh, you won't have your glasses on because of the rear uh, eyepiece adjustment. I know this has been a really long video, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about generation or anything like that with night vision, but hopefully that's gone into enough detail. Um, I am really, really impressed with this. I've heard a few different myths and rumours about a few different things uh, in regards of water ingress and, and bits like that, but there's no real sources of information. Uh, and you don't know who that person is and how they put them together. Now... I was told it was in the battery unit and I can actually see potentially why this has happened. So I'm just gonna quickly unscrew this and then this will be the last point. At the very bottom of all of these threads is your O-ring. That is your waterproof seal once the battery cap is on. Put your battery in and screw it on. It begins to get stiff now. Like right now, that is quite stiff to turn. Like not overly stiff, but if you were new to using your night vision, that might concern you as to how stiff that is. All that has done is reached the bottom of the, uh, the very top of the O-ring. So I can still get my nail in there, as you can probably see. Uh, so any water potentially would get in there. Now, that could be one of the reasons for the water ingress. As we tighten it down, as it will turn further, we go further, 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 quite significantly further. Now, you cannot see the O-ring at all. I can't even get my nail in there so that for me is definitely suspect for someone that has just not put their battery cap on properly and said that they've got some water in the threads 
of their battery cap. Uh, the rest of the unit, it would be very difficult for water to get in. I mean, PVS-14 lenses, they're sealed. So essentially you wind this on, this bit, and then you screw this up to it. Very, very, very tight. With the front, these parts screw into the housing and this is your adjustment piece. So I'll just take that off. You can see that these are your adjustment on your lenses. Mine's still quite stiff. But this part itself screws into here and there is an O-ring on it and all those sorts of things. So again, I can't see water getting into this area, uh, into where the tubes are. So that I'm not quite sure. Now I will obviously test these out and, and you know, my hope is, is that there is no problems with them. Now, lots of people are running these and there's a lot of people using them. And I'm, I'm chatting right now with a lot of people to ask if they've had any problems and they haven't. I've also spoken to the manufacturer and said, you know, let's be really honest here. Uh, what problems have you had? And although in the very, very early batches, I think there might have been a few issues in regards of the way that things were sealing up. But this was in the very early demo press units. And those issues have obviously all been addressed to this point. So that's my 1431s. They've got Photonis Echo tubes in. I got them from Baller Tactical. Uh, I paid 6,800 for these. And that's pretty much it. Sorry if this is a long night vision video. Um, and if there's anything I've missed, obviously please feel free to let me know. Hopefully I've covered everything. Um, but I'm really, really impressed with these. I do like them. They're nice and robust. They're nice and rugged. Uh, I would be quite happy to probably throw these. Uh, and not worry about them too much. And that's pretty much it. So, if you want to know any more, drop a comment in the, in the box below. If you want to see some more information on night vision, airsoft, meal sim, and all those other good things, please head back to the channel, check them out. Sorry that this was such a long video, but I uh, did want to go into a lot of detail. I am super happy with these. Massive thank you to the guys over at Baller Tactical and Argus for making them. Um, yeah, stay updated. See you all soon. Bye.